Well, after denying for years the infamous laptop left at the Delaware repair shop was not his, the first son, Hunter Biden, coming clean while trying to play victim. Hmm. Hunter's lawyers wrote a 14-page letter to the Delaware Attorney General. Now, in the letter, Attorney Abby Lowell says shop owner John Paul Mac Isaac unlawfully access the data. Hunter's team even asking the Justice Department to investigate. Now, they allege Mac Isaac worked with former President Donald Trump and Rudy Giuliani to weaponize its content. Yeah, Law, law writing, quote, this failed dirty political trick directly resulted in the exposure, exploitation and manipulation of Mr. Biden's private and personal information. Again, Hunter denied this for months, even on national television like this. All right. He did uh, deny it. Mm -hmm. uh, we know that from the past. Right. And so the owner of the repair shop, Mac Isaac, says he got possession of the laptop and hard drive in late 2019. Now, he says he notified Hunter for months that his laptop was ready for pickup, but Hunter never responded, never came to pick it up. So Mac Isaac then alerted the FBI and they picked it up in December of 2019. The New York Post broke the story a month or so before the 2020 presidential election. Twitter blocked their account, the New York Post account, and blocked users from sharing the link to the story. Now, that will be the center of a hearing on Monday in Congress. Joining us now to discuss, former acting U.S. Attorney General Matthew Whitaker. Um, what, do you, what do you want to find out about this whole story? We, we, we see this unfolding. Uh, it looks like his attorneys are trying to go on the offensive. Uh, we'll start with that. Uh, do you think this is a tactic, or what are they trying to accomplish there? Well, they're trying to change the narrative. As you know, uh, what I've seen from this is, is that Hunter Biden signed a contract to get his computer repaired, and part of that contract said after 90 days, if he doesn't come pick it up, it becomes property of the shop. And that seems like a pretty slam-dunk uh, case for me, um, I think the interesting thing is them wanting criminal charges. They go, you know, going straight to the criminal charges uh, against certain individuals, including Rudy Giuliani. You know, but I want to see. I guess ultimately, I don't think the law is on his side, but obviously, this is a well-planned PR stunt to try to get the attention away from the contents of the laptop. You know, whether or not he was at the house in Delaware and all the issues that have been in the news lately. Uh, do you think that the contents of the laptop uh, will actually potentially uh, put the president, President Biden, uh, in a compromising position? That's what a lot of people are assuming will happen. But if there is data to support that, do you think we'll ever find out about it? Yeah, I think that's a really interesting question because uh, I'm sure, like uh, me, most of your viewers haven't gone through, you know, the publicly available contents to see exactly what is on there. You know, we've heard in drips, uh, for example, this uh, this email that was sent in kind of the geopolitical uh, context of Ukraine and predictions about the future of Ukraine. Um, and so I think I think those types of documents, those emails, the contracts, you know, again, we've we've had it in drips and drabs. I don't think anybody understands the full extent because this was essentially the, the the computer that Hunter Biden did business off of uh, while Joe Biden was vice president and then after his vice presidency. So I think I think there's still a lot more to come and maybe they're concerned about what the future might hold in releasing information. Do you think the goal is to find out what Hunter Biden uh, may be responsible for or guilty of uh, or how it connects to the form uh, to the current president? Yeah, I think, you know, obviously there is a, um, you know, a public uh, issue as to what Hunter Biden was doing uh, with his name and, you know, kind of whether he was crossed illegal lines. We've seen his drug use and his gun possession, for example, you know, those were clearly violations uh, of the law. Uh, but I think ultimately it boils down to is is was there illegality? Was uh, the president involved in any way? And ultimately, you know, sort of how the dots are connected between China, Russia and Ukraine and Hunter Biden and Joe Biden, if any connections. Hmm. Interesting. And then, you know, we have the, of course, the infamous laptop, but then we're also uh, learning about these documents that uh, President Biden has had for quite some time, the classified documents that also could have some connection to what is on the laptop. Again, do you think that the FBI or the DOJ will actually connect any dots or do you think they will intentionally avoid connecting any dots? Yeah, I really think ultimately that's why you have a special counsel in this case. Um, you know, obviously, 
Um, Joe Biden, uh, well, while he was vice president and while he was a senator and ultimately as a private citizen before he came, became president, should not have possessed uh, classified documents outside of a secure facility. And he did. And so then the question is why? And the contents of that is very important because if those contents related to Hunter Biden's business activities, that's a whole different direction than if they were just random documents that he happened to, you know, forget was in his briefcase. And I think that's ultimately the 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 one of the most important questions that Rob Hur, as special counsel, is going to have to answer. Matt Whitaker, thank you so much. Good to see you both. Thank you.